Hi there, friend. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Just grab yourself a cup of coffee or something and let's spend a little time together. And I hope that uh, if this is the first time you've seen the program, it won't be the last. My name is Arthelaine Ripley. The program is called Home Keepers. And I think that's kind of self-explanatory. And then I never want to fail to thank all the regular viewers, the regular supporters. God bless you. We've been on the air many years and it's by his grace and by your faithfulness. It's always good to bring back uh, a, a good friend for many years and that's Dr. Tom Woodward. I think that uh, I've interviewed him off and on for over 25 years and have watched this wonderful steadfast child of God through the years and watched the Lord just expand and expand his horizons. And uh, he's one of the best in the nation when it comes to apologetics and also on the uh, truth of creationism and intelligent design, whatever you want to call it. And has written uh, Doubts About Darwin. And let's see, he's written another one. Yeah, Darwin Strikes Back. Those are two books he's written. Travels the World. And he is the founder of the C.S. Lewis Society. And I've had the privilege of watching that grow a lot through the years. So he's here today. We're celebrating a brand new book called The Mysterious Epigenome. And <clears throat> I told a friend the other day, all the books I read, I think I ought to be smarter than I am. But I'm thankful for people like Tom Woodward who can tell us, you know, about DNA. And then we found out about the genome. And now this is something maybe you've never heard of before. It's called the epigenome. And the knowledge and the ramifications that the discovery of this could have are unending. I'm anxious for you to hear him talk about it. He wrote this with another uh, good friend of Homekeepers, and that's Dr. James Gill. So uh, two wonderful, wonderful men have written this book, and you're going to learn more about it. And I'm going to join Stephanie in the kitchen. And uh, all I'll say is a pasta dish. We'll talk about that more when I get over there. But I was checking out inventory, and we have some of these left. I know hundreds of you have them. Uh, but this is the crystal heart necklace. Got a little key there. And it's got earrings. And it goes with so many things. And um, it's yours for that gift of at least $25. That includes everything, friend. Uh, if you use a credit card, call 1-800-229-0059 or write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I've joined Stephanie, and she's got one on, too. So yes. uh, we want all of our sisters Not out there to have planned. one. Mm -hmm. I know. I love it. But we got a lot of sisters out there on the other side of that camera. We mm -hmm. want them to have it. Yes. Okay, we were talking about, um, you know, when I was a kid, we went through some hard times and we had a lot of macaroni dishes. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday night, or Saturday night, we always had beans and cornbread. And my dad would put milk on the cornbread and all. Mm -hmm. Probably much more nutritious, you know. Yes. And I kind of think people are going through that now. And this is one of those meals that yes. uh, if you are really, you know, watching your uh, grocery budget, which is enormous nowadays, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a good is one. always a great frugal meal yeah it's filling it's healthy you're using wheat pasta mm -hmm. so yeah always frugal and it's kind of the base right but this has tuna in it and also mm -hmm. we're going to put it together which tuna is protein i mean you have yeah. you know you, you cover the bases here yep so we have a three green onions and you know back then america was not obese right think about that um I personally love these kind of things, but nowadays I think they're kind of necessary. Right. Yeah. And then we have garlic. You, I think you cut a little extra. You like extra garlic, Yeah, I put right? a little extra in there. And Where's we no have already um, cooked the pasta and put in a cup and a half of frozen green beans. Mm -hmm. and right towards it. the end of the cooking process, we threw mm -hmm. the green beans into so that. So you see it's got a lot of good stuff in it. And it's easy, easy meal. And then mm -hmm. we have a can of Italian diced tomatoes. If you like fresh, you can just uh, chop up two tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought since it mentioned the Italian seasoning that I'd mm -hmm. get that, but the fresh would be great. Oh yeah, this will that'll really add to the flavor. It is smelling good. Mm. Yeah, it is. And, and this is... That's, um, that's a quarter cup of tea, uh, teaspoon, a quarter cup. 
Oh, that'd be, oh, that'd be a lot of pepper. Kind of salty. Yeah, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of Italian seasonings. And it calls for eight ounces of uh, white tuna drained and flaked. And this is 10 ounces because we're not cheap around here, are we? No, not cheap. And hey, no. that's protein. That adds to the... Now, does this go in there or in here? It'll go in here because everything will eventually just go oh, in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get this heated up a little bit. You should cook the garlic and the onions just probably a, a little, little bit, bit longer. longer, but we're gonna push it on through. I, you know, I'm a pretty simple eater. You know, I you... keep it simple. I tried, you know, doing the whole let's do a fancy meal thing, and you know what? It was expensive, and my family didn't even really like it. <laughs> that is, uh, that is, um, you know, there's certain times of the year yeah, and I just keep it so simple. Do my meal plan for two weeks, get it all ready. There's times for feasting, a time for fasting. And there's and time, time for simple. Yes. Yeah. That's most of the time. Yeah. I'm just gonna use that measuring cup instead oh, okay. of pouring because we I made a we lot made a of, little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I know what Arthelene's gonna have for lunch today. Mm -hmm. Mix that up good. Mm. And then we um, that is so simple. We're just gonna put a little, it said it called for a little bit more, a little more olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. That's a good fat. You know, Deborah Ray's always telling us you need those good fats for your brain. Mm hmm Maybe mm. if I eat more good fats, I'll understand the epigenome better. It sounds really <laughs> interesting. I was listening earlier. Yeah. He's pretty pretty amazing to listen to. And well, then? it's amazing when you know that King David said we're fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't think David knew about the epigenome, but I'm telling you, he he spoke a lot of truth. Oh, that looks so good. Isn't that good? And then we're just going to take some parsley. Is it wrong to just eat out so of the pan? You just go right ahead. Mm. Good. Let's get this interview going because I want to eat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's excellent. I would have thought of putting tuna in like I that. I would have but. never thought of putting it, especially with tomatoes. All right, friend. This is a winner. If you want a copy of this, the information is coming up on your screen. And then stay with us. You're going to learn a lot from Dr. Woodward. I promise you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Well, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Tom Woodward back. We do have a history, do we not? We do go back almost 25 years. I remember uh, when the C.S. Lewis Society was first founded. So mm -hmm. how long ago was that? Well, it was established here in Tampa Bay in uh, 1988, so 24 About years there. ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome back. and Thank you. Uh, this is readable, even for people who do not have a scientific mind, as I do not have. Uh, but let's take a little history. Most people uh, have a little understanding of DNA and then, then go to the genome and then, then to this. Sure, and DNA is something that was discovered to give perspective here when I was three, well, I mean, they knew about it, but they didn't know its structure until I was about three years old, 1953, so that dates me. Mm -hmm. And so the, the DNA molecule is, of course, famously pasted all over the magazines and books and the internet. And I have a copy uh, in terms of a three-dimensional model with me, if I can just lift yeah, it up. Yeah. So this is uh, actually developed in our office, and we can kind of twirl it like this, and it actually uh, opens up, DNA unzips like a zipper, and uh, whoop, there it's unzipping. And so I'm going to show in a moment where the epigenome fits in, but this is about uh, 21 rungs of, of the DNA ladder. And in the DNA in one cell, you have about 3 billion of these rungs. So you take this and multiply it by a couple hundred million, and you have the DNA just in one cell. And how big is that? Oh, so it's cells are so tiny head, you can't even it? see it, and there's 60 trillion times that amount of DNA in our whole body. So we are walking mountains of DNA. But what scientists didn't realize, oh, and the, the complete library, the amount, the amount of DNA or the total structure that's stuffed into one cell in this spherical compartment called the nucleus. That's the genome, okay? The Human Genome Project. Well, now, they haven't famous. known about that very long, have they? 
Well, they just in 2003 finished the I final remember. draft mm -hmm. of, so that they actually have spelled it out every A T C G. We use four colors: uh, blue and orange and red and green. So, does the DNA have the genome in it? Well, the DNA is the genome, so okay. you can put an equal sign. The total, the sum total of DNA in one cell is the genome. Think of it, the library, and the little genes, the pieces of DNA, those are the books. The complete library is the genome. What they didn't realize is that there was something sitting on top, the epigenome, and this is a methyl tag, and it's like carbon and three hydrogens. Looks like it Mickey Mouse. It ma almost matches your beautiful coat. Oh, thank okay. you. And it, it does. It's like a, a triple ear yeah. uh, Mickey Mouse. And the genome really is a pattern of about 30 million of these little switches that are added to the DNA letter uh, matrix. I think I can get it in on here. A, on a something that's on, not as Yeah, on the letter there, I'm hit. swinging it out so you can see it. And that is a methyl tag. And when you add these to a piece of DNA, it basically shuts it down. It puts it to sleep. It's, a, it's an off switch. And uh, we actually have a video. It's about okay. a minute long. And a, a friend of mine uh, provided the voiceover. But uh, maybe we could show that so people can see where the DNA is spiraled. Yeah, let, let's take a look at this. I think that you're getting a really good science lesson today. We hope. <laughs> Imagine that you were able to slip inside a human cell and approach the spherical nucleus where the DNA is stored. The only access is through a ring-like structure, the nuclear pore. Passing through this strange gateway, you can see the double helix of DNA, which is carefully wound up on a series of tiny spools. These are the histones, and they are precisely shaped for storing the DNA molecule. Scientists were puzzled to find several tails projecting out from each spool. They wondered what might their purpose be, and it turns out that these tails have many functions. Some tails grab tight on the DNA, locking it in place. But when a section of DNA needs to be opened up, a tiny unlocking device, an acetyl tag, is attached to the tail by a special machine. Then the tail swings away, and the DNA is exposed and is ready to be used. This is just one tiny glimpse of an exciting new world of complexity beyond our DNA. Welcome to the epigenome. <laughs> I'm speechless. I think our animator in North Carolina did a nice job. Oh, did he ever? He worked on that for six months. <laughs> well, um, it's excellent, and it really, it really tells the story. Right, and on our website, apologetics.org, we actually have the entire 12-minute um, video summary of our book. So if anybody wants to go, they can see that or show it to friends. It's no charge. And we have that on, yeah. on the screen right, right now. Very good. Right now. And so these little acetyl tags are amazing little critters. Again, millions, tens of millions of them in one cell. And they're like tags or flags. And the acetyl mentioned in that uh, little animation is another. There's actually five, two big and three little tags. But some of them are added directly to the DNA, like I modeled here. Some of them are added to those tails on the DNA spool. But it was a lot of fun to realize that these tags and flags can be affected by the way we live our lives. Health habits, uh, diet, exercise, uh, you know, how we handle stress. It's amazing. Okay, if, uh, if, I, if I diet right and mm -hmm. exercise and all that, get my rest and all, does that change my epigenome? It apparently does. Now, the scientists, scientists are just very rapidly and like uh, furiously, uh, just with total focus, trying to open up this black box, this mysterious area of the layer of information on top of DNA. And apparently, the patterns of those tags and flags and switches, which vary from cell type to cell type, they can Im be improved through time by the way we, we live our lives. And I think that's a biblical principle it that is. is being acted out or discovered, you might mm -hmm. say, in science. And you can actually pass that on to the next generation. Uh, if uh, if, uh, if uh, one group of uh, farmers in North Sweden have a problem with binging, their, their children were having uh, lifespans 30 years shorter. That was how wow. much they were affected by the binging of the, the little boys when they were five, six, seven years old. It's amazing. Oh, it is indeed. Now, you wrote a couple books about Darwin. Yeah. What, what do you think he would think if he had, the, he didn't have any of this. 
He did not know that the cell was a complex thing at all. We know it's far more complex than uh, one of those Discovery you know, shuttles or whatever, uh, any of the spaceships that we send into uh, outer space. I think Darwin would be shocked and he would have a hard time maintaining the, the doctrine or the dogma. Wouldn't he come out with a completely different outcome? He would probably have to say, my theory that blind forces are creating all these computer codes is hard to really hold on to any longer. Yeah if he was an honest man. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much he was blinded by his philosophy. He was, I think, spiritually and intellectually blinded mm -hmm. by his commitment to a philosophy called naturalism or mm -hmm. physicalism, there's different names for it. And a lot of scientists today, I think, are equally mentally blinded. It's the sometimes called the, in theology the effects of sin, the mental or noetic effects of sin when we become rebellious uh, and really counter ourselves against the Creator. It shuts down or darkens our mind, our ability to draw logical conclusions. I will never forget at the end of that marvelous movie called Expelled. Oh yes, I love that, Expelled. Dawkins at the end of the mm -hmm. movie, mm -hmm. question, you know, they, the questions were kind of put layer after layer and then, yes. uh, so he said, we all came from one cell basically and the question was, where'd the cell come from? He said, I don't know. He was so, honest, I mean, uh -huh. we have to grant him that, but yes. then he said, well maybe it was sent here, uh, created in outer space and brought here or sent here, and then, and then Ben Stein, bless his heart, says, <laughs> Oh, so you believe in intelligent design after all? <laughs> and then Dawkins began squirming a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was that was absolutely mm -hmm. uh, priceless. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you th try to think of the ramifications of this, they're unending, mm -hmm. frightening, I think, and Could exciting. Be scary. They are exciting. exciting. What does it tell you about the baby in the womb? Well, the baby in the womb is setting up all of its, you know, cell types, you know, the, from a single cell you get nerve and skin, muscle and heart, brain, you know, all the organs are being set up from a single cell. And the epigenome is what tells each cell how to um, express itself. It's like it's a director. It right. is, yeah, and I love that a a analogy. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, it's just because I'm so smart. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, re you've read the book. I read your book. We tried to make it creative. I hope you enjoyed the, the trips into the cell. Well, uh, <clears throat> trust me, you did a good job because this was not my best grade in school. My wife said, this is the first thing you've written that I totally enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel good about that. Yeah. But, but seriously, uh, no, the, the, the exciting part is that it affects physical health, and we tried to use this in a conference we held a few months ago down here. Michael Behe came, the famous author of the mm -hmm. Darwin's Black Box book, and we called it Shaping Your DNA Destiny. So physical habits, me, you know, health habits, and even mental habits, spiritual habits, can shape your epigenome. Boy, that is powerful. It is powerful. It's, it builds a bridge to the average person to be interested in this, but also the layer upon layer of code, computer code upon computer code upon computer code, shows us again the greatness of our fathers, of our creator's design. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I could only think of <clears throat> also a scripture that in the last days knowledge would increase. Hmm. And I believe that's every kind of knowledge. That's good knowledge. I would not disagree. I, I would chime knowledge in. And this kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. scientific knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's increasing rapidly. The epigenome is so exploding so fast, this whole new area, the information coded on top uh, you might say on the back of DNA, the director of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. DNA is the orchestra players, the epigenome is the The director. epigenome is, is sitting on the on DNA of, telling it what to do? Exactly. It's the director of the orchestra. Wow. And so as we see layer upon layer upon layer of it, added computer information, it just glorifies the awesome power, brilliance, you know, the engineering ability, engineering prowess of our father. It's just a, of our creator. What should this speak to a mom and a dad uh, as they think of raising their children or having a child and raising them and educating them? Shouldn't it be some kind of uh, information they can take it and run with it? I would, I would hope that they do and probably the best introduction is the three movies from Illustra Media. They're available by the way on YouTube, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Unlocking the Mystery of Life. So if anybody wants uh -huh. to jot down the name of these three movies, Unlocking the Mystery of Life, The Privileged Planet, and then the third one, Darwin's Dilemma, which deals with fossils. Those three movies, three hour, you know, one hour each, so after three hours, you have a crash course on anything a high school student would need to uh, kind of throw a monkey wrench into the propaganda.
process that a lot of public education is using mm -hmm. to shape minds in a Darwinian mindset. Mm -hmm. I am talking to Dr. Tom Woodward and he along with Dr. James Gills, another good friend of this program, the mysterious uh, epigenome. Um, okay, if, if the epigenome is, is kind of the director controller maybe? Uh, both, both terms are totally appropriate. Okay, mm. uh, then can I direct the, the epigenome? Can you direct the director? Mm -hmm. You can send um, uh, food, trays of food, of encouragement, <laughs> <laughs> encouragement <laughs> notes. You may not be able to uh, shape him like putty, uh, you know, or mm -hmm. clay in, in human hands. But again, uh, they've found out that um, an article just came out. You'll love this. Mm -hmm. Big news story just two months ago. A single trip to the gym changes the methylation, these little tags and flags changes the methylation pattern on your muscle cells. They did a biopsy before these people went and then they went and worked out on their bicycles or whatever. It came back to did another biopsy. Mm -hmm. They found that like half a dozen metabolism genes were awakened from their sleep and began to do their thing. Boy, that ought, that ought to motivate you. Oh yes, Nothing so all these little sleepy genes, the methyl tags were you know, pulled mm -hmm. off and those genes got up and running through one trip to the gym. This was a shocking discovery. So that the epigenome, these little tagging and flagging mm -hmm. system that sits on top of the DNA, it can be affected by what we do. I, a lot of this leaves me uh, speechless because mm -hmm. America is the number one, it's the most drugged up mm -hmm. nation in the world. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of experts on there, on here to tell that because something's wrong, doctor gives you a pill. Mm -hmm and it's got a lot of side effects. We are the most obese mm. uh, nation in the world. Now, to think if a trip to the gym could do this, yes. what in the world would happen if somebody just set their mind to do what's right? Absolutely, and this is related to the process of aging. Another article came out this week in which they compare the epigenome of, of the white blood cells of a one-year-old and a 99-year-old and they did this seven or eight, with seven or eight different people, and the results are shocking and very encouraging for understanding even the aging process. But the epigenome, these little tags are very closely tied into obesity, diabetes, and a host of other, even cancer, they found links. So, Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I got a couple of, of questions. We always run out of time with you, so you just need to come back more often, you okay? You're okay. so kind. Uh, number one, when you learned about this epigenome and then went so far as to write a book. How did it affect you spiritually? Dr. Gills and I have thought a lot about that and we have, uh, matter of fact, it was his encouragement. I thank the Lord so much for his oh, he's such a good mastermind man. influence and in writing the first manuscript and guiding it all the way through as I got involved, is that we found ourselves worshiping God with kind of a, um, a knowledge but just a humble ecstasy to see what the Lord has done. You're giving me chills. <laughs> I mean, chapter 11, my, my favorite chapter of the book was the next to last, chapter 11, uh -huh. where I, I <clears throat> just said, and you think the epigenome is great, let's show you what we've discovered about RNA and DNA in the last seven years that will blow your mind. Some of the RNAs are acting like team captains, like air traffic controllers, like little scaffoldings that jump upon each other's back and then they dissolve away when they're not needed. This is just the little unsung hero, RNA. Okay, explain that one. Okay. The RNA. RNA. Well, they thought RNA was just this humble, like a Xerox copy of the DNA. So this DNA uh, model uh, here, if I could open it up, oh, I'll just go ahead and open it. See, it opens. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if I had my That's whole... A cool thing. Yeah, thank you. And if I had my RNA model here, I have it over in a little suitcase, I would show you how it's structured like half of a ladder, like cut the ladder in half or take one of these pieces. Is it part of the DNA? It's a copy. It's, a, it's okay. an exact duplicate um, letter by letter copy of the DNA information. But then RNA was found to have dozens, not one or two, not three or five or ten, dozens of jobs, of functions, of duties inside mm -hmm. the nucleus and sometimes outside they didn't even know existed ten years ago. So this is wow. an, this is, it's an RNA revolution, it's an epigenetics revolu revolution. The 21st century belongs to, I think, biology. And God is revealing his fingerprints yes, in, he is. in every nook and cranny. And it's smaller than a pinhead. 
smaller than a pinhead, but, but uh, millions of times more complex than the latest Microsoft or Apple computer. We've got about two minutes left. I want to ask you about <clears throat> your travels. You've been mm -hmm. many, many parts of the world uh, speaking on uh, creationism from a scientific point of view. Right. Uh, weren't you in Russia recently? Or? Well, we spoke in Ukraine, yeah. and um, I've spoken, of course, in about eight or, eight or nine uh, Eastern European mm -hmm. countries. And then, how are you received? Well, in because South Because Russia's S never learned anything except evolution, have they? They've been their schools. They've been spoon-fed uh, evolution pretty heavily through most of their uh, well communist history. Let's say from 1918 or 1920 mm -hmm. onward. But I've found that there is a, a shocking, for me, openness and even excitement to hear about how scientists are detecting intelligent cause or intelligent mm -hmm. agency within the cell. And for just to give you an example, I had a fairly hostile audience at the University of Cape Town. My wife and I were in South Africa doing mm -hmm. ministry. And one guy in particular was charging at me hard every day with the you know, first to raise his hand for Q&A. And several of the professors were poo-pooing. But that audience, after four days, and this was a pretty big audience that mm -hmm. came out for lunch, uh, lecture every day, began to slowly see there's more to this than they ever mm -hmm. thought about. And at the end, the hostile guy, Tom, ironically, that's my name, mm -hmm. said, well, thank you, Dr. Woodward, for coming all the way across the world to present credible evidence to show us that there may be a designer after all. And this is an agnostic student. Mm -hmm. And so I was really excited to see that change. Which is kind of, isn't it the reason, one of the reasons for the C.S. Lewis Society is to reach those kind of students. And, Absolutely. Uh, those that on are on a level that uh, not everyone can ab perform ab on. Absolutely. I mean, we want to be encouraging and equipping the saints in the church. Uh -huh. So that's why my wife and I do many church conferences. She works with kids. I work with adults. But our focus has been universities. So it's been oh, exciting. You cannot stay away so long. This is so really been invigorating to me. Thank you. Uh, we are out of time, but I hope you did get the website uh, as it has come up. And there's so much to learn, but you know, it all leads you to one thing, and that's our Heavenly Father, the great Creator, and Jesus Christ, His Son. That's where it all goes. Don't forget that. And please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.